The KTA was formed to give an international platform to the skills and talents of kiteboarders throughout Asia and to bring professional level competition and training to the region. The KTA launched the first international tour of its kind in Asia in September 2009 and the 2011-2012 season has developed to include four stops around the region. The countries that made up the 2012 tour was uh, in Philippines, we started with Philippines, went over to Vietnam, followed by Thailand and finished off in China. And the highlights of the 2012 tour is definitely China with the biggest entries ever. We had 116 entries in China. Um, there was spectacular racing there. And another great highlight this year was the Asian Championships for the race sports, where we crowned the Asian champion. And we had a big entry there on the race board class. I guess that was our biggest entry ever we had in race board class, actually. Boracay in the Philippines, Muine Beach in Vietnam, Pranbury in Thailand and Ping Tan Island in China served up some great conditions with prizes up for grabs in three disciplines this year. Our main disciplines in the KTA is uh, racing. We got twin tip racing and we got uh, race board racing. And twin tip racing is definitely our biggest class that we have. We got usually about 50 plus entries in the twin tip class. We got about 20 to 30 entries in the race board class. But the race boards and the twin tips is basically that the race boards is the one class that goes Olympic now, which is the official ISAF sanctioned class, which uh, gives, comes more and more popular these days. And the twin tip class is our biggest class we always have, and which is not officially sanctioned yet, but hopefully it will be within the next few years since we always have the most entries in this class and it's the most spectacular racing there and it's the entry class to race boards. And then we also have a freestyle which is the most spectacular class for all the spectators on the beach because it's close to the beach and people can see what you do on the beach. The season opener was in the Philippines at Bulabog Beach on Boracay Island and was powered by Aqua Boracay. A leading tropical island tourism destination in Asia, Boracay welcomes almost one million visitors per year and is well known amongst water sports enthusiasts for its good winds. The opening party kicked off as competitors welcomed the third KTA Philippines and the first stop on the 2012 tour. Day one saw 25 knots, which was met with a mix of excitement and trepidation as riders headed out to do their thing on the water. The single and double eliminations were held in good winds over the first two days, with lots of tricks and big air on show for the spectators and judges. Despite some protest hearings, the riders are never ones to keep things too serious for too long, preferring to deliver where it mattered, with some exhilarating rides on the water. Day two finished with double eliminations and some awesome airtime, passes and kite loops on show. Not all tricks, however, went to plan. The winds dropped slightly on day three, but spirits were not dampened as the double eliminations got underway in the morning, followed by the finals. Andrei Saunik from the Ukraine impressed with his power kite loop tricks, as well as Mauve and Slim 5, to win the men's category following two heats of the finals. In the women's category, Victoria Solovakina from Russia came out on top. The freestyle highlight was local 14-year-old rider Stefano Ganugi who blew everyone away with his skills and new tricks such as the Kite Loop Slim, Kite Loop Mode, Shifty Grab 313 and Kite Loop 3. Five wins in a row and Stefano finished in sixth place overall, a future Boracay champ in the making. Being the third KTA Philippines, organisers decided to up the ante with a new partner, Aqua Boracay, 
a luxury residential development on the stunning Bulabog Beach. Comoraca has decided to sponsor uh, the KTA for, in the Philippines for this 2012 because we believe that uh, we, our beautiful Bulabog Beach deserves to be more known among the kite surfers and in the entire world because it's one of the best beaches in the, in the world. Uh, we have the perfect conditions for kite surfers and for every kind of water sport. Aqua Boracay is a, a four-level beachfront development set of 16,000 square meters of tropical garden. Today is day three of this uh, 2012 KTA Philippines. Uh, this morning we had uh, freestyle doubles. Uh, this afternoon, for the whole afternoon, we are having uh, races. Uh, we are particularly lucky with the weather. We had a strong wind up to today. So, and guys, enjoy the show and uh, it was a pleasure having you today here for the day 3 of KTA 2012. Uh, see you tomorrow on day 4. Three days of course racing, rotating between twin tips and race boards, provided plenty of excitement for all. 20 to 25 knots of wind saw impressive speeds and seat of the pants racing. On the final day, winds dropped to 12 knots, so the decision was for twin tips and race board racing back to back. With two twin tip races and one race board completed, the wind decided to call it a day. The afternoon chill-out session gave competitors time to relax and recharge in readiness for the awards and final party. The evening celebration started off with a Cabrina Awards hog roast and ice loo ceremonies at the Sandbar Boracay, followed by an after party at Jungle Bar. Boracay proved again to be a great spot for kiting and remains a firm favourite on the KTA Tour. Forty-one riders signed up for the three disciplines at KTA Vietnam, Freestyle, Old School and Big Air. Hosted by C2 Sky on Mui Ne Beach, competitors were looking forward to the typically good winds the area offers. With no racing being offered at this stop, the numbers were slightly down. This shows more riders are starting to specialise in disciplines and are becoming selective in which they compete. This is in part due to the high standard of competition on the KTA Asia Tour and the desire of riders to perform to their max. The C2 Sky Freestyle Raid and Asian Old School Championships kicked off in true KTA style with the Cabrina opening party presented by Unique Resort. Following on from the mega Cabrina closing party in Boracay, KTA Vietnam had to pull out all the stops. Fire dancers, belly dancers and manic magicians created a unique and memorable carnival atmosphere. Known for its great kiting conditions, the winds took a few days to arrive this time, but it didn't stop the competitors enjoying Mui Ne Beach and surrounds. Uh, today, it's not enough wind for anything. We had like three, four knots the most of the day. It looks really good for tomorrow, so we're going to have an early start tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Um, we're going to have a good party tonight in Ocean Republic. We're going to have some dinner over there, and then the wind will blow for sure tomorrow morning. So everyone better be ready for tomorrow. Wind is looking good from early morning. We start at 9.30 first possible start. Get your kites out early and get ready for the freestyle. It's going to be amazing. By mid-event, 20 knots was blowing and greeted riders in the morning, 
a great day of competition was expected and competition director Stephen Hurtig set out on a mission to complete all disciplines and have results for each in by the end of the day. We're here in uh, Mui Ne, Vietnam for the KTA event, it's day three, wind's coming up, we're going to get the men's singles out on the water here, run through those and then on to the women's singles and then finally finishing off the day with the old school event. So, good program for the day, hopefully the wind follows through and uh, yeah, it should be good. 20 knots built to 30 and the riders had a day they will never forget. Seven hours of competition left all competitors tired but happy by the end of the day. The freestyle singles eliminator saw an early upset with Asian champion Yo Nera Pitcher Pudla ousted. Poland's Marek Rowinski was displaying some awesome skills and moving well through the heats with some powered moves. He looked set to take the top spot, but Canadian pro rider Sam Medski had different ideas and got better as the competition went on. With some killer high mobs and slims off the wave kickers under his belt, Sam took a well-deserved win. A big shock in the ladies as favourite Sue Kay of New Zealand tore her knee landing a move. This allowed Norwegian Yannick Stav to compete in the finals against Nanette van der Snoke. The Dutch rider took her consistency from the heats to the finals to win the women's freestyle title. This morning we uh, finished the uh, freestyle single elimination. In girls division, winners uh, uh, are uh, first place uh, Nanette, uh, then second was uh, Janike, and third one uh, was uh, Ali. And uh, uh, I uh, ended up uh, second uh, just before uh, Sam Medisky and uh, third place uh, took uh, Ken. Now we are uh, starting with old school, so enjoy the show, big jumps, we're uh, coming. Next up was the first ever Asian old school championship, an evolution of KTA's old school project from last year. The winds had picked up further and the old schools were set for some serious action. Local rider Kim Nguyen Du showed some stylish board offs, but on his last trick injured himself and had to retire. Germany's Toby Brau stole the show with a variety of 450 tricks, board kickflips, mega rotations, overhead board spins, leg passes and even a dead man board flip. Pushing Brauer harder was another local rider, Lei Hoang P. However, he could not hold off Sam Medski and finished behind him in third. Swiss female rider Astrid Burrs wowed the spectators and judges with one and two foot board offs and some air ballerina style rolls. Nanette van der Snoek, winner of the freestyle, continued her success and took second ahead of Vietnamese Julia Diapan Tu in third. Big Air proved popular with riders and crowds loved it too. The winning airtime was a massive 6.2 seconds for the men's by Russia's Pavel Kristiankov. For the women, Vietnam's Julia Diapan Tu showed no fear with a hang time of 5.4 seconds, actually the third longest of all competitors. Big Air was a strong event for Vietnam's men, with Pu Le Hong and Pi Le Hong in second and third places respectively. A short and hectic stop on the KTA tour, Vietnam impressed and pleased both riders and spectators. Onshore, KTA Vietnam didn't disappoint either, with a great social scene including a poker night, the Maelstrom mid-party night and the Cabrina opening party which kicked it all off. A special visit from nine times world champion Kristen Bowes and her KB4 Girls coaching clinic added some spice to KTA Thailand. The pro clinic, together with a KTA competition, aims to introduce new girls to the sport and coach girls in the sport. 
It was a three-day coaching clinic, part cable park and part off the beach. Hi, I'm Christine Böse. I am here in Paknam Pran Beach in Pramburi for the second time that we cooperate between the KB for Girls and the KTA. This is actually the KTA Championship, Asian Championship in Freestyle and it's also the Asian Course Racing Championship so it's a great event to cooperate with. We're going to do some uh, competition coaching with all the girls and I'm really hoping to see some of the girls in the KB for Girls event win here. On Pak Nam Pran Beach in Pranbury, Thailand, the Asian Freestyle Finals and Asian Course Race Championships got underway in classic conditions. The Asian Freestyle Tour titles were based on three selected tour stops and bringing that together with the Asian Course Race Championships gave KTA Thailand a full Asian focus. 68 riders of 24 nationalities showed the international appeal that KTA now has. In the race board class, a three-way fight between Denmark's Bjorn Jensen, Turkey's Salih Kakir and Thailand's Jo Narapichit Pudla proved to be interesting, with emerging Thai rider Kuki at Sakunfang mixing it up. Riders from Japan, China, Philippines and Hong Kong all raced hard, but couldn't knock Bjorn and Salih off the two top spots, with Jo taking third. In the girls' division, pre-race favourite Catherine Bolgwart from Germany was being pushed hard by Rachel Hollinger and Astrid Burrs, both from Switzerland. Catherine's closest rival was the up-and-coming Thai Fon Banyapa Jantawan, who was taking part in her first international event and showed a lot of speed on the course, taking two wins over Catherine. However, Catherine's experience won out and she took the win overall. Freestyle continues to attract a lot of international riders to the KTA and the Thailand stop saw riders from the UK, Poland, Germany, Holland and France in the mix. After the men's single eliminators, first place was held by Poland's Marek Rowinski, Japan's Hiro Nakano was in second and Yonara Pichard Pudla in third. Double elimination saw some great fight backs. The top two riders, Marek and Hero, were on fire, with Marek finally edging Hero out to take the men's win. In the women's division, Kristen Ozier showed off powerful moves and kept her head to fight off Kiwi Sue K in the finals, with Aussie Ellie Dudfield placing third. Twin tip racing remains a favourite at KTA events and continues to bring new people into the sport. Now in its third season on the tour, the standards have increased and the competition is tough. There was controversy early on in the men's division with Canada's Max Rice riding the fly surfer Daggerboard, giving him an advantage. Protests and discussions ensued and Max sportingly agreed to ride without the Daggerboards and still went on to win the men's division irrespective. For the women's division, European riders dominated. Michaelina Laskoksak from Poland, Rebecca Mordel and Ingrid van der Heiden. Michaelina put on a masterclass, winning all races but the one she didn't compete in, to clearly take the overall win. Pingtan Island sits in the Taiwan Straits and was host for KTA China for this year's Tour Finals. An area known for good kiting conditions, the winter monsoon season sees regular winds of over 30 knots. KTA China was supported by the Management Committee of Pingtan Comprehensive Experimental Zone 
And believe it or not, this was the first international sporting event on the island. Based on the success, it certainly won't be the last. We're here in uh, Pingtan Island, which is in China, for those who don't know, and it's the final round of the KTA for uh, the 11-12 season. It's pretty amazing, quite different to all our other events. Um, absolutely huge infrastructure going on, as you'll see through the week as the whole competition unfolds in front of us. Uh, it's looking like we're going to have more than 100 competitors, which is pretty amazing to uh, pull in that number in the last event of the year. Ping Tan wanted to make its mark, both as a water sports destination and also as a top event on the KTA Tour. With this in mind, the prize money on offer was 30,000 US plus equipment prizes, which brought the total prize pool to 40,000 US. A new and exciting venue and good prize money made KTA China the biggest stop on the tour with 116 entries. The opening ceremony was a formal affair, something unseen on the KTA Tour before. Categories for KTA China included freestyle, course racing and old school. Thousands of spectators turned out to watch the competition from the beach. In the single eliminators, Japan's Aya Oshima and Thailand's Yonara Pichapudla were on top of the standings after day one. In the double eliminators, the battle scene earlier started to play out. As the tide receded, the crowds followed the event further and further down the beach. Both the men's and women's divisions ended in super finals. Yo and this year's Asian champion Ken McCaw battled it out for the men, with Aya and Nanette battling it out for the women. Yo held on to first place to take the KTA China freestyle title for men, while Nanette overhauled Japan's Aya to win the women's title. Timing would have it that the course racing at KTA China was one of the first international racing events following the announcement that kiteboard racing will be in the 2016 Olympics in Rio. Course racing was split into twin tips and race board classes and the numbers competing were impressive, showing that this discipline in the sport is growing and will likely develop a feeder system for the future Olympics. The racing came to its climax on the final day. Turkey's Salih Kakia managed to hold off some strong competition to take the men's title, while Germany's Catherine Borgwa dominated in the women's fleet. Day three surprised in many ways. Firstly, the wind disappeared, leaving participants and the crowd waiting and ultimately disappointed. However, every cloud has a silver lining, and there on the beach, something new emerged. An experience no one present is likely to forget any time soon. KTA Tour co-owner, Willie Kerr, took centre stage and taught the large crowds how to dance. It went something like this. Big fish, little fish, cardboard box. Big fish, little fish, cardboard box. Old School was competed on the last day. 25 knots of wind, high tide and kickers everywhere proved to be a perfect combination for some great old school displays. Riders stayed firmly hooked in to hit the heights, threw out the dark slides, walked on water and more. The riders loved it, the judges loved it and the crowds and growing numbers of media were blown away. Top old scores turned out to be Holland's Nanette van der Snoek for the women and Turkey's Tanner Eikert for the men. Talk of the town was one of the youngest riders, Stefano Ganugi, who followed his success at KTA Philippines earlier in the tour. He's giving everyone something to think about. Four days of fun on Pingtan Island and some great on-water competition came to an end with a lavish award ceremony. Speeches, great food, cheering and the largest stop on the 2011-2012 KTA tour ended in style.
The 2011-2012 KTA Tour was counted by all a success. It was challenging securing venues and sponsors, but with the level of participant interest and the standard of competition continually rising, it shows the Asian interest in kiteboarding and the KTA Tour is going from strength to strength. And following the announcement that kiteboard racing will become part of the 2016 Olympics, things are likely to change very quickly in the kiteboard world. Exciting time.